All right. Hi. Hello. My name is uh, Katie Wirtz. I am a scenic artist that works here in Los Angeles. I have been working professionally since, I guess I want to say 2007. I work in, I've done film, television, theater, events, museums, uh, house, specialty houses, specialty painting, murals. If it pays, I'll do it. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of different ways to make a living as a scenic artist, especially as a classically trained scenic artist. That is like, if you walk into a shop or a job or anywhere and say, I'm a classically trained scenic artist, that's, oh, you'll get hired like that. Um, but there's very, very few of us now because uh, these universities and these training programs and their infinite wisdom are like, scenic art, we don't do that anymore. We just have VFX houses. We'll make the, the carpenters paint, you know, when the reality is it's a, it's a, it's a vibrant art form. It's a, it's a useful art form and it's still very much in play today because I don't know how many times I've wound up on a job and they want me to do what is a classical scenic artist, but people with no training and I have to train them on the job. And I would give my left arm for someone who knows the techniques. So it's really wonderful to be able to come here and show you guys these, these techniques that are hundreds of years old. You know, these are a legacy and these, these are need to be continued, need to be passed on, not just for, you know, my job, but just in general, because you will use trompe l'oeil in your personal work as well. I love trompe l'oeil. Once I learned how to do it, I never stopped doing it. I have to be told to stop doing it. I have to be told to stop adding it to things because it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. I love it. And hopefully you will too. So this is a uh, piece of trompe l'oeil practice art. Uh, it's from an Italian artist, Gavametti. It's in my folder files of trompe l'oeil. As a scenic artist, you become kind of like a magpie. You start snatching images everywhere you go and just adding them to your files. So sometimes I have things, images, collections, books. People will ask me who's the artist. I don't know. I liked it. It was good research. It's a good file. It goes in the bank. So this is a good one. This is classical trompe l'oeil. Um, a lot you see a lot of it is it's called baroque style trompe l'oeil so i'm going to get a little closer here so you can see it because i don't have a pointer but it is this sort of you can recognize it through this swervy curly leafy you know design that kind of does this it, you know these these very distinct curves it's very it's french obviously trompe l'oeil is french for full the eye and, you know, it's a lot of flowers, a lot of foliage. It's, it's very, very classic. This is trompe l'oeil, you know. And you, what you want to do with trompe l'oeil is you want to make it look three-dimensional, 3D. There was a, during the Baroque period, there was a very big craze, you know. You know, it was the new hot thing to paint things to look three-dimensional, to pop it out, to fool the eye, you know. So it's kind of like, you know, the new hot thing. I'm a little old. I'm 40, so I don't know what's hot today, but it's like, I don't know, the way that Millennial Pink and Dusty Rose was the hot design trend a few years ago. I don't know what it is today. But trompe l'oeil was the big thing in Baroque France. So you look at paintings, you look at architecture, you look at the backs of chairs from that time period, you see these swerves, these curves, these, these, the, this very distinct foliage. And you see the, an attempt, uh, successful or not, at this three-dimensional effect. So let's move on. Sorry, these are books I just got mixed in here. So these will be included. Uh, they'll be put on canvas. But uh, this is a really great book about trompe l'oeil. It's got great examples of uh, things that you will be needing as a design student and as an artist and as a scenic artist. Ornamentation, because trompe l'oeil is ornamentation. 
This is a Tashin book. Tashin books are like crack to me. I love them. If you can get a, a chance to get a Tashin book, ask it for it for Christmas because they're very expensive. But they're full color, full illustration, gorgeous, you know. And this one is a great book for trompe l'oeil because it gives you so many different ornaments that you can use to then build trompe l'oeil off of. Sorry, I didn't really organize this very well because I'm like doing like two jobs at once right now. And uh, <laughs> I just kind of all threw this in a, in a folder. And then I was like, nah, nah, nah. here's another one. This one I, ha I got it uh, during grad school. So this is one that you can get a bunch of trompe l'oeil designs off to. This one you can find on Amazon for $6. They're, they used to make all these great books, like classic ornaments and designs. These are these are design books. They made it for architecture people, for film people, for for set design people. And um, there's a million of them. If you can't find it on Amazon, check thrift books, check thrift stores, go haunt your th local thrift store. They are a gold mine of books like these. And start, if it's, especially as a student, if you have, I know you guys are broke. I remember this time period very, very well. Unfortunately, I'm in the boat right now because of the film strikes. I'm a little broke again. But uh, when you have disposable income and you do have that opportunity, you know, build your library because you never know when you will need these books. You'll be on a job site. We need you to make it look like this. You can go, I have just the thing. Bring it into work. Your art director, your designer, your co-workers think you're a wizard. Legitimately, they will think you're a wizard, you know? So it's always good to have something like this in your back pocket. But like I said, I just kind of threw everything together. Here's another one, here's another book, sorry. <laughs> Apparently I put them all at the beginning. Fantastic ornament. These were the trompe l'oeil books that I was supposed to bring, but they're in a box in New Mexico because I live in three different places right now. So here we go, all right. So part of trompe l'oeil is uh, we're going to be doing a medallion. You've got been passed out a medallion. That's your very basic trompe l'oeil medallion. I did the exact same medallion when I first learned trompe l'oeil. But knowing the basics will allow you to learn how to do any sort of medallion because you will be thrown uh, a piece of architecture and told to trompe l'oeil it. And so you will be able to learn how to take any piece of this, given in a picture, and know how to break it down in your mind and know where the, your shadow and your highlight is and your midtone, because that's the three things you need to know when you do trompe l'oeil. If you look at the medallion in front of you, you look at up here, you know, you know your basic drawing, because I know you've hopefully you've all taken a, a drawing class. You know, every black and white drawing has a shadow a highlight and a midtone and all, all trompe l'oeil is is knowing where the shadow the highlight and the midtone are so here we go here's another set of medallions i really hope this is not ai i try to keep ai out of my collection as much as physically possible because i hate it with the fire of a thousand suns um <clears throat> but this is also you know it's very good you can see again shadows highlights you know it's always good to just kind of have this stuff in your back pocket especially the more um <clears throat> complex shapes you can see like how some of the shadows are deeper on certain areas and some of the shadows are lesser you know because when you have the real thing you know and you put it up on stage and then you go back 30 feet and you're like i can't see a damn thing you know so you also want to make that dance between realistic versus it's on stage. You have to see it from the audience. Okay, more medallions. So this, these are all going to go in your packet. This is why I wanted to have, give these out to you. So you can look at them. You can look at the play between shadow and light and highlight. Uh, I'm going to go over this when we, we do your drawings, but um, shadow is part of your medallion but what really sells the trompe l'oeil let me see if i can find a better image here we go here's a good one what really 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 sells this is the highlight 
it was what really makes you 3D is, is the highlight. That's what's going to give it your pop and your life, and it really makes it, like, come off the page. Because it's just one thing to, uh, you know, it's just one thing to give it the shadow. It's like, yeah, you can see it's three-dimensional, but it was not going to read unless you give it that big, these nice highlights. So, and uh, see, here's another good example, especially with um, if you really, really want it to read from the audience, you're going to want to give it these very deep shadows, these hot, hot highlights. And then always, it's especially important for three-dimensional uh, drawings, is a bounce shadow. So you guys know what bounce shadows are, right? Dead silence, blank I'm stares. Gonna, I'm going to give it a definition. Okay, a bounce shadow is um, <clears throat> where you have an object resting, and the light cast from the table will bounce and hit the object from underneath. So you always have a small highlight underneath the object right before you hit the shadow. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me zoom in. You see? Right here, that's called a bounce shadow. Can I see that? That is what really gives your image that really 3D look. It's, it's looking for where your bounce shadow is and making sure to add that. That really gives the, 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 the roundedness, the depth, and, and the reality, you know? So you walk, look around and you can see where your bounce shadow is. So this has got a bounce shadow. Here's got a bounce shadow. You can see it right here, but really thin line. It's, there's one here. This one doesn't have it because it's not right up against the the table so it's it's straight up just casting a shadow but you know where it's it's really kind of resting and the light is bouncing back up you can see a bounce shadow so it's it's also kind of understanding the way that an object rests in space the way that light will hit the object and sort of it's a an observation of an object in space and that's really just training your eye to read how an object sits in space. Um, and that just comes with time and practice, the same way that you can look at a color, like I can look at a color and break down the components of the color. And that's just come with time and training. Like I, that green, I can be like, oh, that green is made up of white and this amount of green and this amount of yellow and it's got some brown in it, you know. That comes with training and time, you know. So if you spend the time, and the training and the practice, it's real easy to just look at that and go, that's there, 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 you know. So again, here's another one. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, this is way more complex. These are called, these are Byzantine. So there, there's different um, art styles that you will get. Byzantine and Baroque are really the ones that do the um, <clears throat> trompe l'oeil. These are the these are the really major shapes. So when you have an artistic style, or a, or a designer or a director is like, I want this to be baroque. I want these to be Byzantine. You know, you know, you're these are coming. You know, so being up on your artis artistic history, art history is really really beneficial. Yeah. So again. It comes in, it can come in all different shapes, all different sizes. You can paint it, um, you can carve it, you can, you know, let's see, here's another one. Murals, love this. You go into uh, an Italian restaurant, you'll see really shitty trompe l'oeil. They love it. Here's some, some really clever trompe l'oeil. They started to add little birds, little, little flies, pieces of fruit. Here's one from, I think this was a play. I don't remember where this one is from, but you can see this is flat 
but it's trompe l'oeil. So this is the kind of theatrical trompe l'oeil you would probably be asked to do. But um, you can see, again, that's that clamshell shape that shows up a lot. You could, you'll be doing lots of pediments. You'll be doing lots of columns. You'd be doing sort of these shapes. You wouldn't probably be doing a statue, but again, learning basic, like the swerves and curves, especially learning how light travels around an object, how the bounce shadow works, how a highlight works, how a cast shadow works. You would be handed something like that and told to make it trompe l'oeil. It would be really easy because you just know how the architecture would work in space. Um, this again, this is a, this is all trompe l'oeil. So this is a flat painting. This is a really, really great example. So it's uh this is a colored object. They learn, they know how to, color is really hard to do with trompe l'oeil, by the way. It's a whole extra dimension because instead of just doing three colors, uh, uh, a shadow, a midtone, and a highlight, you have the color of the object, but now you have the shadow, midtone, and highlight. And however many shadow, midtones, and highlights come in the colored object, because shadows, midtones, and highlights come in many different colors in a colored object, especially if it's three dimensional. So, uh, usually when I do trompe l'oeil, my shadow is uh, raw umber. That is a really, really good, just basic shadow color. It gives you a richness and a depth because black is, um, it's very, it has a tendency, depending on the color of black, it could be a blue black, it could be a purple black, it could be a gray black. It's, there's, there's a lot of variation in black. It's very hard to find a black black. Whereas raw umber, you always know exactly the color that you're going to get. And it really does give a wonderful depth and shadow to um, <clears throat> what you're working with. Um, so here you go. Here's some more trompe l'oeil, more realistic trompe l'oeil. And you can see the different colors and color variation when it comes to doing trompe l'oeil. A lot of times you'll be asked to do like just a picture frame as trompe l'oeil and then the painting itself will not be uh, trompe l'oeil. I have um, stuff in my portfolio which I'm going to show you where I had to paint the picture frame as trompe l'oeil and then just have the painting. Um, let's see what else. When we hit a meme, this is the end of it. So here's another good example. See all the frames are trompe l'oeil and the pictures are flat. So this is a really, um, it was a very popular style of uh, Georgian or, um, so Georgian is that French Rococo, that very frills, frippery, you know, sort of thing. They loved trompe l'oeil, this sort of like pull the eye to frame these beautiful paintings and then the frames they would sit in would be trompe l'oeil. That is like, the ultimate in excess look at how rich i am i'm so rich even my painting i've got paintings on paintings on paintings and even my paintings aren't real because i've got trompe l'oeil because it's like the hot thing man it's it's like you don't like these rooms are like conspicuous consumption ostentatious wealth this is like having a ferrari in your living room is this kind of painting um here we go Again, this is again a Ferrari in your living room, having this level of painting and woodwork, you know, on your walls to be able to afford it and to have trompe l'oeil, you know, so. Oh, this is, this is conspicuous, ostentatious wealth. And um, so if you're going for a, a level of design where you want to show off, this person is rich, they want to show it, they got money, and you want to make your painter very, very happy, you do something like that. See. Okay, I think this is the end of the slide. So this is just more real world examples of trompe l'oeil. These are modern day examples. So people will do trompe l'oeil on the sides of buildings to make it look like it's a, a cut in of a village. They'll do cutouts on, in the sides of museum walls. Like, look, there's a whole other part of this museum. They'll um, do fake walls like Wile E. Coyote, you know, 
or they'll do like a, <clears throat> like a, again, a cheesy Italian restaurant. Yeah, so this is the last slide. So, and we can also do, uh, we have no internet. Oh, I can fix it on the internet. Yeah, we'll do that in a little, little while, yeah, but I'll show them. It, um, let's see, it looks like it's a half hour in, maybe. I can't see the clock. Okay. So just to give you an idea of where we're at. Okay, great. Yeah, so we can move on from this, and I can do the demonstration of the, the this is a drawing. Perfect. Words are hard. Words are hard. Let's go shopping. <laughs> okay, so we can turn the lights on. 